Hogstock. Hello, everybody, and it is a victory, what is it, Thursday? I guess Thursday for all you listeners. Victory Thursday. We're, we're not doing victory uh, post-game shows now. Uh, I don't I don't know. Do we want to play the Slow Hill or, or Hail to the Commander song in here or no? Hell no. Are you kidding me? There is no way that is going on my show. You can play my version of the real Hail to the Redskins. That sure, I okay, we'll do want. that. We'll, we'll do that. Uh, you know, it, I gotta boot, I gotta slow it down in post, and you know no, that way it'll sync up ab- with the new song. <laughs> no, I'm I'm I own the copyright to that. No, you own the copyright, not uh, I own the performance copyright. Oh, that's true. You do. You technically would own the performance copyright. And I, well, and okay, I so Washington to allow you to slow it down. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, Washington gets a win over Jacksonville. Let, let's get that right off the bat. Good win for the team overall. They beat the spread nicely. I think the spread was only like three points or something, and they, they yeah, won by three and a half six. when I did the preview. Yeah. Yeah. So they beat the spread. Uh, great come from behind, like final quarter. You know, a, just a fun game to watch if you like that kind of finish to a game. Um, I, I don't know where we want to start. Jahan Doxson having just an amazing starting uh, first game. You know, he he's looks like he's going to be Rookie of the Week this week. He might even I mean, be let's, leading for Rookie of the Year already. Yeah, let's start, start right there. Number one, I was proud to say I did not watch this game live. I elected to watch Saints-Falcons, which was also a very good game. But mm-hmm. obviously I went oh, back but, and watched the game later. Watching right, the game. Right. Um, in terms right. of Jahan Dotson, to me – the most impressive thing is that he looks like an experienced pro. In terms of his route running, yeah, he's very impressive. Well, and that's the thing about him. It, you know, every, you can't have it all, right? I'm the only one in mm-hmm. the world who has it all. <laughs> Nobody else really does. And what he doesn't have is some of like the obvious Terrell Owens like physical attributes. Uh, right. You know, but what is more important in a receiver and what he does have, which is why everybody liked him is that he has the route running ability. He has the professionalism. He has the right attitude and he has good hands. I would take that any day of the week over a dude who runs four three and is a train wreck or isn't a good route runner. Cause those people have come and gone a million times in the NFL. So I'm actually objectively very positive about Jahan Dotson. I, and uh, without saying it, Diami Brown is, is who you kind of just described there. Well, you know, I told you, I've been speed. telling you guys yeah. for two years that it was yeah. going to take him a couple of years to work out. Cause it was yes. obvious to me that his, in his, uh, route running ability in college wasn't really up to snuff. So I think that right. he may get there, but it will take a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so many great performances to call it on the offensive side. Uh, and I think we'll get to them all. But, uh, Steve, I assume we still want to start out traditionally. Do you have stats ready? Or I know we're doing we're on short notice here with this show. So, uh, yeah, uh, well, do you need I a bit to pull up stats? Um, I, uh, well, I mean, why don't you, while you do that, why don't Dave and I vamp if you want to pull up stats? Uh, Dave, is there anyone else who stood out to you on the offensive side right off the bat for this week? Well, real quick, I just want to go back to Dotson real quick. Because the right. day that he was drafted – I do remember coming out, and I was blasted for it on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I all caps, extremely excited that we made that pick because I knew what we were getting. Because well, when he was in Penn fan, State, so. yeah, when, when he was in Penn State, the one thing the one thing he did exceptionally well is that he always always ran precise routes. He always was very technical in how he ran the routes, but on, on top mm-hmm. of that, he was always very prepared for the defenses he went against. So he understood the corners he was going against. He understood how to run the routes against certain coverages and so forth. And then if he ran a route and it didn't work, he'd come back into that route, remembering what he had to do to adjust, and he would adjust. And his quarterback, Clifford, who was maybe probably the worst quarterback in all of college football in my mind, I couldn't stand him. It reminded me of everything with Taylor Heineke and his arm strike going downfield. And the reason why that Dotson – much like McLaurin, 
was a pretty big contested ball guy was because of the fact that Clifford could never get the ball downfield. Mm-hmm. And Dotson was just that. He was Mr. Clutch money every time on every snap he had. I think the second lowest drop or uh, catch percentage or highest second highest ca- uh, catch percentage in all of college football. So right. it was, I was extremely excited when we drafted him and he was so far, he's just money. And well, he's, see, yeah. well, I mean, what you said was, was telling because especially with wide receivers, these guys who are the speed, the burners and the speed demons are mm-hmm. so used to, killing everybody because they're the most athletic person on the field a lot of times guys like that don't have the knowledge in their head and they don't have the precise route running necessarily because they've never had to do that they just outrun everybody and that isn't Jahan Dotson again there's the rare elephant you know the rare unicorn that can do it all like Terrell Owens might have been the most talented receiver I can ever remember they put aside these got 10 cent head I mean he had it all Route running, everything, but beyond him, he had tools and physical size. Yeah, yeah, it's just a shame he didn't. He had mushroom. And but. if you go back to what Jerry Rice used to say about him back then, if he only kept his mind in the game mentally every week, he'd be better than him. Yeah, I that's mean, exactly right. And like right. Jerry Rice wasn't a burner at all. He was pretty slow nope. by wide receiver standards. But so yeah, I like what you said about. It. I think you're exactly right. Okay, in terms yeah. of stats. Now I'm just I'm not gonna go so into detail like I used to because the game is at this point three days old or four days old. So sure, sure, sure. If you want to just give some big highlights. Yeah, so yeah. important when Carson Wentz was twenty seven for forty one, three hundred and sixteen yards three hundred and thirteen yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions, quarterback rating of hundred and one. Antonio mm-hmm. Gibson rushed for fifty eight yards on fourteen carries, four point one yards per attempt. Curtis Samuels four for seventeen, four point three yards per attempt. Receiving wise, Antonio Gibson was the leader. Was the leader seven for seventy-two, McLaurin two for fifty-eight, Curtis Samuel eight for fifty-five, and then Logan Thomas, Mister Gimpy injury dude, three for forty-five, did pretty well. And then Jahan Dotson, the aforementioned Jahan Dotson, three for forty with two touchdowns. But, yeah, and, and that's and then, what, of course, is making everyone happy. Yeah, and then <laughs> no. on defense, and on mm-hmm. defense, William Jackson was the leading tackle with nine, uh, eight solo. And then the sacks, Jonathan Allen had one, Dron Payne had one, and that was it. And then the the important number, I think, with Jacksonville, um, if I go back up to the offense here, James the Robinson. The at- defensive stat I want to point out, the Derek Forrest interception that sealed the game. Yeah, the, uh, the interception, and certainly. We're going to talk a lot about him, I feel like. So. Right. And on Jacksonville, what I wanted to point out was James Robinson averaged six yards per carry. And then Travis Etienne – Average 11 yards per carry, 11.8 yards per carry. So, uh, you know, we can hit that for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that was not pretty, especially and, when we talk about Detroit, too. And there was no question that this week, Tressway did not outpunt the offense. Nope. It was only three for 447. My favorite games are the ones when he outpunts the offense. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. So let, we can get back into it. So one fun thing I want to mention, and it's not – you know, much of a story, but there was a funny thing uh, that I noticed. You know, Warren Sharp, who's been hypercritical of Carson Wentz, and he's a, he's usually pretty critical of Washington in general. Uh, he posted some stuff knocking Wentz after the interceptions at one point during the game. Uh, and then, of course, Wentz comes back to win it. Well, if you want to have some fun, go look at people trolling him on Twitter. Because there's a lot of that going on there. Uh, one stat that somebody pointed out in that trolling, Wentz is the first quarterback to start for a new team, throw for 300 yards and four touchdowns. No one's ever done both in their first start for a team. I find that very hard is, to believe. Uh, that's what some random on Twitter it, said. I thought, I thought that stat was actually applied to Washington itself. Was that for the entire league? I might. Have I just find that, that. I, almost impossible to believe. To be I mean, honest. I guarantee you it applies to Washington because, like, if you look at the number of four touchdown games for quarterbacks, it's not that many in even in Washington's history. Actually, so. I think Alex might be right. I think I do recall reading something like that too. I think I might have misread that. I'm not saying myself. you're wrong. I'm saying I find it hard to believe. It might be right. Oh, I, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. Sure. I, I think four touch. How many guys have a four touchdown game regularly? You know, it, that's a pretty high that power. Rare. I mean, it's high, but it's not, you know, that out of ordinary. Right. But regardless, let's start with Carson. So let's start with Carson Wentz. So what did, what did I sure. see in Carson Wentz? Um, 
it was a very Carson Wentzy game. You know, you sure. saw moments of uh, great arm strength, like legit, serious, big time NFL throws. You saw moments of stupidity. Um, you saw right. moments of bad throws, kind of all over the map with him, and that's very Carson Wentz like. And so, yeah. and and I and I don't, I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade here, but take this to a certain extent with a grain of salt because Jack, this is the first game of the year. Jacksonville sucks. Mm -hmm. Yes. They got better defensively, you know, uh, with some of the people they drafted, but you know, this isn't the Super Bowl champs we're talking about here, but nonetheless, it was a decent start, but it was a very Carson Wincy start because we literally saw the entire range of emotion from this guy, you know, every aspect of his, his game, unbelievable stupidity, great arm, you know, all of it. So it was pretty much what we expect. Now, the trick for him, of course, is to iron out the bad part and just stick with mostly good. And that's the trick. I mean, it's not news, you know, but can he do it? I mean, we'll see. It gets harder from here. It does. It does for him uh, because even Detroit's going to be a better defense than Jacksonville. Uh, not by much, but better. The, the thing I was impressed with with Wentz, I think, and I think we're all, it's it's saying a little bit of the obvious, the ability to come back after th- two series in a row where you throw a pick and you still come back to win a game is, you know, that shows a lot of mental fortitude on his part. That pass to Terry uh, after the, those two interceptions, that touchdown pass was one of the best throws I've seen in Washington oh, probably was, in three years. That was a big-time throw. That, really, that yeah. was a big-time yes, throw. Yes, it was. Yeah. That, I mean, we haven't seen that. Uh, even Alex Smith isn't wasn't doing that when he was here because he was didn't have the arm strength. So he was accurate, but never had that. Uh, so that was a great, great pass. Um, but you know what you said, Steve? He's got to clean up the mistakes. Things like that interception on the weird screen pass, that should just never have been thrown, obviously. Like what I don't, in the world was he thinking? I just didn't even understand what he was even trying to attempt on that play. The screen was not set up at all. No. And he was throwing it inside the screen bubble, uh, which was very weird. You, you know. Uh, the other That's what I'm talking about. Unbelievable yeah, yeah, stupidity, yeah. you know. Yeah. But also, I don't know what that play was even being set up as. Like, it, because it, the play itself didn't look like it made any sense to me. Um. I liked how they distributed the ball well, and, you know, I put that on him. You know, a lot of plays to different receivers throughout the day, day, you know. Um, Well, I think they made an intentional effort to highlight Curtis Samuel. They did. In light of the fact that nobody's really seen him. Mm -hmm. You you know, I I mean, he didn't play last year. You know, all we all know is history. And so to come out and just use him like that, I thought was pretty telling, and I think it was – Scott Turner giving the middle finger to the world a little bit, it, you know, look, this guy really is good. Cause I, I was not expecting Curtis Hammond to come out and look that good. I really was. I think they did the same thing with Gibson uh, in the passing game. Yes. You know, we've all known he could do that for years, but it was always getting overshadowed by JD McKissick respectively in the passing attack from the backfield. But he led the team in r- rushing and receiving yards last week. Uh, so that's, pretty darn impressive yeah listen it was 130 total yards from scrimmage yeah, you yeah. know good good on him um yep. i think we saw well to, to 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 back to curtis samuel i mean i really think that washington like ron rivera wants a mm-hmm. guy who can be the walmart version of Kristen Kristen mccaffrey and he's trying to find that he's been trying to find that since the day he got here it, mm-hmm. Curtis Samuel's supposed to be that. J.D. McKissick might have been that. Antonio Gibson might have been that. Because remember, he was a receiver in college. Right. Not good enough for the NFL, but he's a receiver. So all those guys, I think, are Ron's attempt to find Christian McCaffrey, who is the alpha male of these hybrid receiver running back types. Mm-hmm. And, right. and I, I didn't think... McKissick does what he does well, but he wasn't really a Christian McCaffrey kind of dude. And Gibson isn't really either. Curtis Samuel, I mean, he, he was could an be. impressive guy. He could be. Obviously, he's not getting carries, but can I can imagine him as the offense develops, getting pitches maybe. Maybe you run an option mm-hmm. to him. 
you know, stuff. Yeah. Like keep him out on the in the flats and flat passes and bubble screens and stuff. And they did do some of that. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with a guy as talented as Curtis Samuel. And I think that was uh, what's this Scott Turner putting the world on notice about this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, this, I, I just was a, for that. Just to slightly rewind a little bit, you guys took pretty much all my thunder on Carson Wentz, which is fine. Uh, but I think the one thing that stood out the most with me in that game, outside of what you said, Alex, how he recovered at those two really bad picks, was, I, and I don't think enough is being spoken to this, last year in two matchups against Jacksonville, he did not play well in either matchup. He, I, I, I tried to pull up the numbers real quick. I couldn't get to it fast enough. I didn't want to waste time. But, but I know that... He did not. I don't think even in uh, either game, he didn't have a quarterback rating of over 90. He had right. multiple interceptions, I believe, in both games. He and got knocked he was out of pretty, the playoffs in one of them. I mean, exactly. Yeah. You know, and so forth. So now he went against Jacksonville again, who is an improved defensive team from last year. Like you said, Steve, not great. I know that. But he, they were still an improved unit. And they played against him twice. And yet he had that game against them. It was like he got the monkey off his back. Uh, Jacksonville wasn't able to figure him out like they did last year. Now, granted, a lot of that's got to do with the fact that he has weapons when, in Washington as opposed to only Jonathan Taylor and Michael Pittman in, in, the, in Indianapolis. Here, he had an array of weapons, which goes into Curtis Samuels. Curtis Samuels, I think, was probably the biggest key to this offense because there were two instances that really stood out with me with Curtis Samuels. On that first touchdown drive where they utilized him the whole entire drive, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, When they were inside the 10 yard line, they had Samuels motion behind uh, McLaurin to his uh, to his inside. And after the snap, McLaurin did a crosser to the inside of the field to or or like a little mini post. And Samuels came back to the outside. Well, because of that motion and, and, and direction, the inside, you saw the safety come down the corner, come over and after the snap. They were so preoccupied with McLaurin coming across the middle because obviously I paid attention to him. It crossed right. up the corner and allowed and allowed Samuels to have a free reign right into the end zone. That's what that weapon does for you right there. Mm-hmm. And then when you go to the other drive, oh, uh, when you go down to, oh, it was on this Washington second drive actually, and uh, it was third and six. They had Gibson out in the slot. And they had Samuels in, in a running back. They motioned him out to the slot to the right, and they crossed up him and Gibson coming across. And the defense, while they're adjusting the whole whole process, he has uh, Samuels wide open right there off into the flat for a first down, easy first down, plus a juke he made, which was unreal, So, which was yeah, nice. Yeah. He, he hit three or four really nice little, you know, moves after he had the ball in his hands where yes you know just juking around guys getting the three or four extra yards where it mattered he he had a handful of those last right week. so, uh, so I, I i was more impressed with that than anything with him yeah i agree i think so, a lot so of the stuff opens up more when you have a guy like terry mclaurin on the field yes mm-hmm. uh, you know when you have a legit a real number one level x receiver mm-hmm that teams have to pay attention to it really allows a lot of this stuff to happen. Cause we've seen many Washington games and many Washington years, Alex, where sure. that hasn't happened or they have one weapon who gets blanketed and there's nothing else can go right. And so, but having the ability to open up the field like this and distribute the ball in part stems from having Terry McLaurin out there. Now I, I you know, I was not, hugely overly impressed by him last year in that I saw him get blanketed and beaten one-on-one by a couple of elite corners last year. So I don't Terry you're talking about. Terry, yes. Yeah. Terry Slay was one and you mm-hmm. know I can't remember who else. But um but that happens. You know, point is he's legit. And people are starting to recognize that and they did double cover Terry McLaurin at times. I haven't mm-hmm. had a chance to go back and watch all twenty two film yet on this game. Um, but I think you're going to see him with double coverage on multiple occasions, which leaves it up. And then you have all these weird gadget underneath weapon guys like Samuels and McKissick, and that it really does a number on what defenses can do. Now, the one thing I'll add to you guys here is, and I'm not comparing that. I'm not comparing these three 
to the posse. I would never do that. But just keep what that unit did for us back in 91 in mind as you watch this crew go forward. Because I think these, this trio is much more dynamic than what we had in Deshaun Jackson, Pierre Garçon, and Jameson Crowder. So I think there's going to be somewhere in the middle we're going to see this trio. If they stay healthy and Dotson keeps progressing, there's going to be a point in the middle where these three lay. And to which side of the spectrum do you think they could possibly get to? They'll never get to the posse. They'll never get to that level. I don't think so, especially not this year. No. People legitimately comparing this group to the posse already. No, 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 no. That's that's just me. No, that's just me. Just kind of an interesting perspective to think of going through the season to see where they lay in the spectrum between the posse and what we had then. That's all. It's way, way too early to even have that thought. Look, Terry McLaurin has proved himself. Right. Go ahead. I was gonna say, how about a more realistic comp? Uh, let's let's compare them to like when we had Santana Moss and Antoine Randall L, who were both smaller but like more athletic guys. Let, let's just start with, can we be better than that? And then we'll go to the positive. Well, I mean, the can we? It's, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, Dahan Dotson's played one game. Right. Curtis Samuels <laughs> basically played one game. <laughs> you know, uh, and so I just think it's way too. I, w- do I have positive thoughts about them? Yes. Am I willing yes, to compare them to all-time franchise greats? No. No. I would be willing to have a discussion about where Terry McLaurin fits in that. You know, I think Terry McLaurin is a guy who ranks well with some of those names. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the rest of them, I mean. I think it's fan service to say, oh, they're the posse. And, you know, I know you're not saying that, Dave, but if anybody is, that's just, that's crazy. I will say. Well, nobody is, but at least I have you thinking about it, whether it, whether you think it's obscure or not, but I think it's a conversation. I think we may come back to later in the year and you might tell me I'm an idiot. That's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that, but I'm pretty blunt, Dave, you know that I might literally say that. (laughs) That's fine. I'm I'm good with that. (laughs) <laughs> if you're going to go with any of the greats, maybe talk about the Smurfs, you know, because these are all smaller guys, too. You don't have That's an not bad. anyway. Did, did, uh, did, but, did Cam Sims, like, date Ron or, Rivera's wife or something? Yeah, well, I, I don't, we don't know why Cam Sims never gets up. Well, no, he got on the field at one point, and so did Dax Mill. He's credited with one target. Game. Cam Sims yeah. is credited with one target. But you, right. the reason why I brought him up is you were talking about the Smurfs. Cam Sims yeah. is the only non-Smurf receiver they have. Right, exactly. And, and he's I, got I talent. Was I don't get it. it. Of course, because I was strictly doing the comp because of the size thing. Oh, I know, course. and I just don't <laughs> yeah. get it. I really don't. I don't yeah, I don't it. either. Um, all right, we should talk about the defense a little, and then we'll talk about Detroit, obviously, after okay. that. Uh, obviously... In my mind, this was the coming out party for uh, one Derek Forrest. You know, he had, I, I think, three really impressive plays that uh, hit that caused a fumble. It wasn't a turnover, but it was a really nice fumble uh, that he caused on one play. And that, you know, they lost five yards because the ball went out of bounds. Of course, the interception. And then he had a one or two really big tackles. And so here's my question. And I know it's early. Is this guy what we really need for that Buffalo nickel role? Uh, the thing that they didn't get out of Laurent or Landon Collins last year because Collins was more linebackery and couldn't cover. I think it was more like Derek Forrest coming out coffee break. Not okay. necessarily his coming out party. The reason why I say that, sure, the man had a good game. But again, it's just one game. And you're playing right. against Jacksonville. Yes, he made some impressive plays. Credit to him. But you got to see a lot more before I'm willing to say, oh, he's the next big star. And, you know, we've seen we've seen that movie before, you Mm. know. So while I'm positive about him and this is really the first opportunity he's had to really play, really, Mm -hmm. he didn't play much last year. uh, You know, he only played special teams. Yeah. And so while I was impressed with him, um, I think we need to see more. Could he play that hybrid linebacker spot? Because I'm, I, I sort of take the Jamal approach to the name of this. I want to like shoot right. the name Buffalo McNichol. Um, so this hybrid linebacker position, he's not a bad candidate for it. 
He's got but better it's, size. It's kind of like he's physical. Yeah, but it's also sort of being king of the fools a little bit because they don't have anyone. They're relying sure. on it, yet they have nobody. So mm-hmm. of the people they have, is he sort of leading candidate right now? Maybe. Um, and I, again, credit to him for having a good game, but let's see him repeat that a few times before we start saying he's the next greatest greatest thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying greatest. I'm saying uh, you're not. But we, we, we there's got to be 11 guys on the field. We kind of have a hole in that spot still uh, because they didn't do anything at getting a third linebacker. Right. So maybe well, they got this might Jonathan be the best. Bostic. Now. I mean, yeah, Jonathan, that solves it. Did he not play? I mean, he didn't. He's not. I didn't see him at all. With, yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't even know what jersey number he's wearing anymore because I'm assuming he came in late, so they probably gave him a new jersey. Um, well, I can tell you that so yeah. that I do have what jersey number he's. Uh, I've I've updated. I have not updated the roster chart this week because I noticed they sure. made a change on the practice squad, but I did update it last week. And right. John Bostic. Oh, I was looking at uh, John Bostic is 53. Oh, he okay. I think that is the same number. Then. That was, that was what they had him listed at last week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't notice him. Uh, which you know, maybe he played or not. Uh, well, if we're talking linebackers, talking, I will let you know. Yeah, since we're talking linebackers, uh, what were Dave? What were your thoughts on Davis's play? Did do you think he's starting to look a little better <laughs> at this point, or still struggling well, in your mind? Well, if uh, Jack Del Rio continues to allow him to be isolated on running backs. I don't think we're going to see much improvement in him at all because between him and Holcomb, they were both isolated on both NTN and, and, uh, and uh, Robinson in that game. And obviously they didn't fare too well. Um, yeah. But as far as coverage, I think he still has a ways to go for that. I think he still over pursues. He doesn't take the best of angles when he comes in. Now, I mean, granted, when he does and he's right where he needs to be, right in proper position, he, he's explo- He's an explosive player. He's fast sure. from side on the sideline. I mean, he can get there quick. I just I just think he just needs more time to grow. Unfortunately, he was a first round pick for a position that he was should have never been drafted for, as you've alluded to a thousand times, Steve. You know, yeah. but it's I think I think the potential's there. I think he can be part of a good unit but I don't think he'll ever really get to that level that Ron Rivera hopes that it'll be. He's hey, never going to be the key to the middle line or to the linebacker no. group. Look, it was a bad pick. It's yeah. simple as that. It was a bad pick. And those of you who are trying to squint and, you know, put your beer goggles on and squint and make yourself believe, you know, right. like you see, like the girl is really prettier than you thought, you know, is, is really prettier than she is. You know, because you're wearing your beer goggles. That's what this is with not with you guys, but with some of the fans with Jamin Davis. He's mm-hmm. got a long way to go. Yes, he's athletic. Yes, he's fast. He's got a tremendous physical profile. Uh, all of that. But he did get one night pr- nice pressure that got on a play yeah, that got did. called back. Yeah. yeah, he did. You know, and before I forget, they should Jonathan, do that with him more, frankly. <laughs> Jonathan Bostic had 19 special team snaps and zero defensive snaps before okay. I forget. Oh, yeah. Um, there we go. Yeah, there you go. Problem so, solved. so yeah, problem solved. Um, <laughs> but, no, I don't think da- – yes, Davis had a couple moments here and there, but did he look like the centerpiece of a defense, which is what you'd expect from a first-round draft pick? Not in the least. No, no, no. And, you know, and as, far, and as far as what I get from the fans, I don't sense that a lot of them are really super impressed with Davis and they try to sugarcoat anything with oh. them from what I okay, see. Okay, well, good. So, I mean, I think they're pretty realistic. And I think their most frustrating part is having a guy like Cole Holcomb in the middle as a Mike linebacker controlling the defense. He's he's good against the run, sure. He can bless the quarterback pretty well and everything. But he is just outmanned, outmatched on every single pass play. No matter it, tight end. I mean, you could put an offensive tackle on a pattern, and he's not going to be able to cover him. I kind of think he just, he's a two-down yeah. linebacker. He should be, except yeah. Washington doesn't have anybody to replace him. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, it's no. it's not a good situation for with uh, where they're at, honestly, with either of them. Um, they they have each of them has one or two tools in the toolbox, but no, none of them has the full set. Um, Jonathan Bostic is your savior. You need a new savior. Well, see, yeah. that's why that's why I mentioned on Twitter this week was that. You know, maybe maybe someone like a Blake Martinez to bring him in wouldn't be a bad idea because he's he's not horrible in coverage. I mean, he was pretty adequate in New York, 
But the one mm-hmm. thing that he is very good at is he's very instinctive on the run. He doesn't get eaten up by uh, offensive linemen and so forth. It was, I mean, it was a separation in New York that wasn't because he had lack of talent. It just was he. he it was a scheme that they were playing to. It didn't fit his. It fit, didn't fit his skill set. Some you know, smart so hog style analyst might have brought his name up as a linebacker possibility for Washington mm-hmm. when he was a free agent. Yeah, <laughs> whoever that would be. Yeah, Mike no. should be Alex, um, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was yeah that's, Alex. <laughs> that, that's exactly right. Um, so if we're talking defense, I guess we should mention the whole Mathis injury because it looks like he's out now for the year. Um, it's torn meniscus, going on. right? When it torn yeah. meniscus? Yeah, so he's probably done for the See, season. there's different levels of torn meniscus. Uh, and it depends, you know, there's, you can have partial tears that can heal. I had mm-hmm. that. And then you can have fully ruptured meniscus that needs to be replaced then you can have tears that take a long time surgery and a long time to heal it's not something that it has long-term impact really like an acl might so i don't think it's a situation where you have to worry about his performance but it is a time thing but i don't think yeah. you know you gotta say oh god is he gonna be the same as he ever was it's not that right but he's just for the season let's assume he's done um and, you know, they brought in a couple guys to replace them now. N- names I'd never heard of, honestly. Well, thank God they still have Tim Settle on the roster. Oh, yeah. To take his yeah, place. That was, that was a smart move to sign him for, <laughs> to that cheap deal. You know, keep him around. Or, you know, Ionitis has another year, so we're okay. There you so, go. So, right. <laughs> Alex was, I mean, I want to, Alex, when, when the day he left. I was did, happy. He, he was reunited with Matt. So, okay, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm when he was packing his stuff out of your bedroom, right? Did you help him <laughs> pack the car? Did you See, have you a tear in your eye? You gotta let him. You gotta set him free. Let it's him go. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I'm not so sure I'll be able to do that with Dotson if that ever happened to him. <laughs> That's no, true. No, yeah, you're no. kind of in a man love relationship with Jahan Dotson. That's true. Absolutely. Right. I need to switch right. the joke over to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, we got it. And then, you know, no one's ever going to be here from your album monitor, so we don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> My album monitor is a secret, uh, Alex. Don't say that, please. I, 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 I didn't say its name. <laughs> um, I mean, we could go with your grad school, because your grad school does put out some. I, I have know two you don't grad really schools, so Alex, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't want to say that either. Fair enough. Um, no. So, but defense. So, William Jackson the third sucks donkey balls. So, as so com- does Kendall Fuller. As compared to how much they're making, they both suck big, giant, juicy donkey balls. Mm, and yeah. it shows in how receivers consistently pull up big yardage on them and how they consistently get penalties and how they consistently make mistakes. Now, they did get oh, a can, little better. Can, hmm? can we talk about all those penalties at some point, too? Oh, it's it crazy. Ridiculous. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. It's just ridiculous. And, and mm-hmm. um. I don't know what the answer is. Long Benjamin St. Juice is not the answer to both of them. No, he's not even no, the answer to one of them, probably. So uh, that's a problem. So I mean, the defense has problems, folks. Yeah, you can be as positive and as you want, but remember, this is Jacksonville. Remember this: Jacksonville should have won this game. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, they should have won this game. Um, the quarterback, uh, Trevor Trevor Lawrence. Made some stupid passes. He missed some. T- he missed a touchdown. You know, he he made some bad mistakes. If they had had even a league average quarterback, Jacksonville would have won this game. Um, I'm sorry to say it, it. You know, and listen, the the sc- only score is what matters. You know, the only thing that matters yeah. at the end of the day is who win the game. Okay, don't get me wrong, but Jacksonville should have won. I would be really mad if I was a Jacksonville fan about this game. They played well enough to win in many respects, and Trevor Lawrence ended their, you know, ended that, uh, you know, ended the chances. Mm-hmm. You know, and those receivers yeah. could have done a lot more damage, but for him. Well, they should have yeah. easily had ten more points by halftime. Absolutely, and then they missed a, yeah. then they missed a field goal. Uh, I mean, missed a field goal, and they missed. Uh, uh, William Jackson Thur was had 
blown coverage yeah, on, on Marvin Jones that down one. the sideline. And the yeah. other yep. t- and the other touchdown pass in the back of the end zone was a bad pass. You know, if yeah. he had led him, the announcer said it exactly right. Um, you know, if they let him a little bit more, that's a touchdown too. Oh, uh, that yeah. one was right. In fact, that was the one where uh, Cole Holcomb was covering um, uh, Robinson on that one, but it was a uh, ploy thrown in the end zone. I know exactly what player you talked about with that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had the mm-hmm. NTN drop. There you go. There's another one. That would have That's been a touchdown saying. in a heartbeat. It's just, you know, it was uh, Jacksonville made a bunch of mistakes. Um, so, but corners. Yeah. At Washington, they're, they're not a problem. Good. They have a serious yeah. problem in, in their in their defensive backfield in the corner group. I don't know what to yeah. say. I mean, because if you think about who they have behind William Jackson, Kendall Fuller, it ain't much, folks. No. They're really okay at smart. safety. Corner, not yes. so much. Yeah. Right. Um, they're going to have to scheme around it somehow. I, I don't know what I don't that know means how you do. I don't know how you scheme, or yeah. scheme around it with passing teams with quality receivers, though. It's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to stop having William Jackson play nine yards off the ball. You got to feast or famine with him. You got to play. You got to have him play press. He's got to be up go. in the receiver and he's got to play him right off the line. That, I that's agree his you, game. But they seem to be too yeah. stubborn to let him do it. I know. Yeah. I mean, he's completely does- out of his element in that zone. He, he, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like what you guys said before. I mean, it's uh, uh, Josh Norman all over again. It really is. It's the inverse yeah. of Josh Norman in a lot of ways. Josh Norman should have only been playing zone. And right. Never, yeah, and exactly. Use him yeah. 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 Kind of ironic uh, how teams do that, huh? You pull in players, yeah. you know what their skills are, and then you do the – you could even go back to Albert Hainsworth. As much of a mm-hmm. turd bucket he was, he was actually right about how they were misusing him. Well, remember the first season he was here and they were still running a 4-3. He played pretty well. I mean, he wasn't he was still, you know, a pain, but uh the both outside rushers I think had 10 sacks that year. Yeah. Be, and because of him. And then it's like, nope, we're switching to a th- a 3-4. B- wait, what? And his Why? own <laughs> unique Albert Hainsworth awful way what he mm-hmm. was saying was correct. And he's mm-hmm. handled oh, yeah, yeah. it totally wrong, and I'm not saying I support him, but he was right yeah. in his point. Right, because Mike Shanahan was like, well, I want to. Okay. Yeah, because I'm Mike Shanahan, I'm going to. And so you have here what Dave says about William Jackson is comparable. Now, that William Jackson seems to be a solid, upstanding citizen, isn't going to act like that. Don't get right. me wrong, but they're kind of misusing him. They're absolutely doing that. Um, all right, we should sw- switch up, talk about Detroit real quick. Um, I, I I think we've all watched the Detroit uh, Lions versus the Eagles game, which is nice because we get double uh, research because you know not those watch are our next game. two opponents. Oh, you didn't watch it yet? Um, it is okay. So the first ten minutes feel uh, I'll, since I watched it, it feels like a 1950s game because nobody can complete a, a pass to save their life. There's a shot on either side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's all running. And Detroit's entire offense goes to the running backs. Uh, and that, that held through the whole game. Their, their passing game is awful. Um, so, with that said, Washington got kind of manhandled in the run game versus Jacksonville. I'm going to be pretty worried to see how Swift and uh, Jamal Williams uh, do versus this uh, run defense. That, that's um, my concern number one for Washington. Yeah, I'm pulling out my handy dandy calculator right now because I want to give you right. a stat, and I should have done. I meant to do this. Are, ahead you, are of time. you do? Are you actually calculating how much of the offense those two were? No. Is that what you're doing? No, I'm no. not doing that. Well, oh, I know okay. with uh, with us uh, Swift, he's actually he he didn't play today. He's actually right. listed as questionable for the game. So I mean, there is an outside chance that he. May yeah, not I even think play. that's his gamesmanship. So here's what I was doing. So DeAndre Swift, 15 attempts, 144 yards, which is right. 9.6 yards per carry. Uh, as long he had one one run of 50 yards. So a yeah. lot of times when you see big numbers like this, it's one play, and then you kind of remove that play and the rest of the game in that good. We've seen that a lot in Washington. Sure. DeAndre Swift was averaging 6.7 yards per carry minus that 150-yard 51-yard play, meaning it wasn't a fluke. He destroyed the Eagles. 
the, all the, day. They were they were running a lot of slash type runs. You know, my favorite type of run where you're kind of just getting right through the B gap every time uh, and getting to the second level. Real, he was so good doing that. Ooh, I just saw a mouse. Ah, <laughs> kill it. Sorry, uh, mouse. At least just you didn't scream right like down. a girl. Oh no, uh, you know, just ran right by my foot. Alex is fine. not in his normal home. He is other elsewhere today. No, no, today. I'm in the woods. I'm in the woods. It's fine. <laughs> At least it's a mouse, not something bigger. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah, yet. Because something's going to come and eat the mouse eventually. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, you know, the where there are mice, there are predators. You might see a mountain yeah. lion walk, uh, you know, in. Uh, there, there have been a lot of black bear sightings up here. But that, we're getting off topic. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really would worry about this offense in the running game. Uh, or this gonna running be a attack. Disaster. It's going to be a disaster. But Jerry Goff just looks so clueless from what I saw. Uh, well, so far. his stats, for those of you wondering, he was 21 for 37, 56.8% completion percentage, two touchdowns, one interception, quarterback rating of 80.3. Yeah. The yeah, key stat all... there being the completion percentage, really, really low. Yeah. Well, see, Five unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, with our secondary, this could be the uh, get well game for for golf. Knowing our luck, anyway, is going to this week. <laughs> it could be. And listen, yeah. I, I thought Detroit looked, and again, I thought it might be just be me being having HBO Hard Knocks goggles a little bit, but yeah, I was impressed with what how they looked in Hard Knocks. And again, that's not a fair compare. I know it's not mm-hmm. analysis, okay, objective. But I thought they looked like a pretty decent team, and they looked like they had a good attitude, which would tell me that if I were a fan, which I'm not, but if I were a Detroit fan, I would be hopeful that they could get it together because they seem to have a, a coach who was a decent coach who was with it. And particularly on defense, look like they have some good players. And, you know, I don't think, yes, it's the Lions, but remember who they're playing is Washington. Um, now this is always this is a game the Lions are looking at going we can win this game, uh, right. you know I don't think I, it's a pushover. Right yeah, they mm-hmm. were yeah, as of yesterday they were I'm sorry as of Tuesday they were up it was the line was uh, Lions minus two and a half. Yeah, yeah. yes, they're favored I and mean, they're you know that shouldn't surprise anybody that they're favored right now. I mean, the, um, yeah, I I I just. I, I don't worry about that part with golf, though. I, I really just – and, you know, you mentioned the hard knocks thing, Steve. How Every time a team's on hard knocks, I think everyone thinks, oh, look how, like, passionate the coach is, all that stuff. I've not uh, thought that at times, though. The only time I really was like, oh, this is obviously not going to go well was uh, when they did the L.A. one with Jeff Fisher. That and Rex Ryan's one was just a mess. Oh, that's going way back now, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Jeff Fisher, we're not going seven and a nine again. Uh, you're fired. So <laughs> what do I? Here's what I think are keys to this game. All right. Number one, Carson Wentz needs to limit the dumb plays. If sure. you can get more out of the good, and and this again, this is not like a newsflash here, but Carson Wentz is so hit or miss, he's not consistent. Uh, you know, if you can get a little bit more consistency out of him. Need that number two, as we already talked, you got to do something about under Andre Swift. Is it possible? Yes, is it likely? No, but that's part of it. The other thing is take advantage of the Detroit secondary, they've got a bunch of Gorick out there as in the secondary. And what is Washington's seemingly newfound top uh plus? They've got a whole bunch of weapons in the passing game, so I think those, yeah. those are the three keys. If you those of you who are rooting for a Washington victory. Which is probably most. Dave, what about you? Do you have Do you have any keys? I have one left that I gotta mention. But well, to just first? to go on uh, Wentz real quick, what you were saying with 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 dumb mistakes. Uh, Mark Bullock was on Al Galdi when he did a film breakdown. The one thing that he mentioned with Wentz in his past game, he seems to have done very well, is that he was eliminating what he would call the hero ball, trying to force a feed downfield, and mm-hmm. getting the in triple coverage, trying to force the receivers and so forth, and so to go off of that, if he does that in this game, you know, Detroit does. I mean, Detroit's linebackers are very similar to ours, from what I understand. They're not all that great in coverage. So we can utilize 
uh, Gibson and Samuels again, like we did this past game, and Roy open up mm-hmm. downfield. I mean, I mean, this offense should should do very, very well against this defense. That problem, as long as Wentz, like you said, eliminates or stays away from too many of the boneheaded plays. You know, like you can't like against a quality team, you can't go back to back possessions throwing interceptions. You just can't do that. I mean, you're going to lose that game nine times out of ten. It was a, it was a good thing we played Jacksonville because we would have if we I'm played saying. the Eagles or anybody else, we lose that game easy right there. That's what I'm saying. Don't forget, Jacksonville's the worst team in the NFL last year, and Detroit right. was yeah. just about the second worst team. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, so my one key to this game, uh, one thing I picked up on watching uh, last week. Hurts scrambling really got Detroit's defense out of whack uh, because I think, you know, they couldn't figure out what was coming each time, obviously. Washington, obviously, is not going to do that. Carson Wentz is not that player. I think, though, they need to get a heavy dose of the Curtis Samuel gadget stuff in there early on, uh, go very motion heavy early on, try and get them off kilter similarly with their strengths, uh, in terms of uh, those types of gadget plays. And that'll open up the rest of the offense if they do that early. I like so that. So that's my key. I've got a couple key matchups I wanted to briefly mention, too. Number okay. one, TJ Hawkinson versus Jamin Davis. TJ Hawkinson being the highly drafted tight end who has talent. He was mm-hmm. behind Logan Thomas there for a year, all of that. But Jamin Davis needs to grow up. And I don't mean that literally, mm-hmm. and I don't mean that as a person. I mean as a player, because he's going to face more mm-hmm. better than Hawkinson. But if I were uh, the Detroit coaching staff, I would look at that as a weakness. And Dave, you've been saying this for weeks. Uh, you know, there's yep. that one. And the other one that's more interesting to me uh, is Charles Leno. How does Charles Leno handle Aiden Hutchinson? You know, Aiden Hutchinson being yeah. the number, what is he, number two overall drafted uh, player this past year, star defensive end, mm-hmm. did have a good preseason. Charles Leno being Washington's B minus level left tackle. So that one's the one to keep an eye out. But I think the Davis versus Hawkinson matchup could end up being pretty mm-hmm. critical. Mm. Uh, Leno had a good game in the last week. We didn't really talk about the line that much. He played pretty well. So, uh, yeah, and considering that <clears throat> the Jags did have the top ranked defensive end. You know, right. at the number one overall pick. And they they drafted two defensive ends, I believe, is what we, right? Uh, or was it, it was two linebackers. One's it's linebackers, one. yeah. Right, right, right. But that's where their strength is, is that front. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, <clears throat> last topic, our non-Washington topic we have. Oh, what happened to Dakota Prescott? Uh Hurts his hand. Boo hoo. I feel so sad. So sad. Uh, I need to drink some tears of sadness coming from Dallas. Listen, I'm just a shame. I'm not a Washington fan anymore, but that doesn't mean I'm a Dallas fan. But I am. I must say this properly. I respect Dak Prescott as a player. I think he has a lot of talent as quarterback. What he also has a lot of bad luck with injuries. I think if he's yes. fully healthy, he's like a top 10 quarterback in the NFL, I think. Everybody might not agree with me, and especially with a bunch of Washington fans. I get it. That's fine. You don't have to. But in my view, he's probably a top 10 quarterback. I think it's a pretty darn big loss for Dallas. Think about who they have behind him. Cooper Rush. Wasn't that who yeah. played? Cooper Rush? Who? Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's a massive loss. I they think- also have Will Greer, I believe, is Oh, well, C. forgive me. Yeah. Man. I was totally yeah. wrong. I think if he's out for eight weeks, I saw eight weeks. Is that what you guys saw? I, I saw a minimum eight, of eight, but now weeks. they're saying four. Okay. You know. four, if okay. It's, it's a broken hand. You know, like, how long does a bone take, take to heal? Well, it's, it's just, is it a throwing hand? I mean, that's. It's his I thumb, think it's I mainly think. his thumb and his throwing yeah, hand. Yeah, I think right? it's his thumb. That's what I think it is. Th- I didn't think it was a broken hand, it was a thumb on his throwing hand. So, but if he's out for like half a season, I think that totally changes the NFC race. That's really what I wanted to bring up on this. Oh, what yeah. is the impact of Dak's in, of of Dak's injury on the NFC East race? Thoughts? I mean, it's huge. You, you know, I, I think this basically means it's 
opened up for Washington and us or the Eagles, or Washington or the Eagles for Steve, since he doesn't say us anymore. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, I think that's a huge opportunity for the rest of the East, because let's be honest, after they gave Dakota all that money, they, you know, they've had to gut a lot of that team because that's what you do when you overpay a quarterback. Um, they're not going to have, they don't have the parts for a Cooper rush to make this thing work. They might win one or two, but if he's out for eight, they're going to go like two and six. And that it could eight go horribly wrong. Can. It really could. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, I'll have much joy out of it also because, you know, my contempt for Mike McCarthy as a coach as well. So, you know, I'll be getting double joy out of this if he's <laughs> failing and the Cowboys are failing. So. Mike McCarthy is like the ultimate chump. You Always know? Yes. Yeah, he yeah. really he, he Mike McCarthy's a chump. I don't know what else to say about him. The only reason he's there is because Jerry Jones wants a chump. He does not yeah. want a strong, like Ron Rivera and Jerry Jones would get along horribly. Yeah. Mike McCarthy, and, and he's a chump with a ring because somebody else got it for him. Yes. That's the other thing. So, Dave, your thoughts. You've been silent. <laughs> well, uh, well, for one, I, I'll say I, I, I never cheer injuries. I'm not a real big fan of injuries. I do like Dak Prescott myself and everything. But uh, so I don't cheer the injury. I just cheer the suffering that these Dallas fans have got to go through for the next several weeks. That's what I'm most excited about, you know, uh, especially the few that I do work with. It's kind of enjoyable seeing their faces kind of drop. Are any of them from Dallas? No, none of them. Of course not. None of them. Of course not. Philly has the same problem as DC. But uh, but I, I think I I think that loss of, of of Dak Prescott just makes just makes my point that I made on our prediction. So when I when I had said that they're only an injury away from having a very bad season because they have zero depth, and then, and we're, we're going to see that with Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush is not going to win them any meaningful games. I don't see it anyway. I don't see that happening. You were totally but, uh, right about that, man. You did say that, yeah. and you were 100% right. I didn't really buy it at the time, which was stupid right. to me, but you were right. They are very right. thin. Yeah, it's – and, you know, I mean, you look at their receiving core on top of that. It's like they have CeeDee Lamb, who I think who I think is a very good receiver, very fine receiver. Yeah. You know, Gallup is still – he's still coming back healthy. I, in fact, he didn't even play last week, did he? He was – he was a healthy was, – was he, I, think, I think he was scratched for that game, too. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just like, I mean, and losing Dak, you just you lose that running game now because without without having any semblance of a of a passing game, what do you think teams are going to do? Go ahead, yeah. Cooper, throw all throw all you want. It's just Pollard and Elliott. You guys are getting nothing for the next several weeks. You know, so I mean, Elliott didn't have fit. a bad game. He ran 10 carries, 52 yards, you know, which is. I I didn't watch this game, so I don't know why he only had 10 carries, but 5.2 yards per carry is certainly doable, but that's not going to win you any Super Bowls or anything. It, right. It's not, and that number, you know, the 10 carries, of course, like you said, is bigger. Like, why would you not lean on him more? It's just a really big <laughs> drop off. Like, I think if Carson Wentz he, went down in Washington, <laughs> Taylor Heineke can play well for a few games. I know mm-hmm. it seems like Washington fans all hate him now for some reason, which I think is weird, to be honest. But that is he weird. would come in and step in and do pretty well. Is he John Elway? No. But no. Cooper Rush is just not a guy who should be playing. Right. So, and and and, and to me, it's just, you know, it's I know I know you mentioned that kind of gives, you know, Washington an open window now and, you know, and some fans are going to be all over that. Now we have a chance to run for this division. But unfortunately, I just think it brings it down to a one team race. I think it's just it's it's Philadelphia to lose, period. I don't I don't think disagree that, with you, Dave. But where I think the weakness for them is that Jalen Hurts is not that good a quarterback. I'm true. sorry. He's just not. Right. That's true. But see, the one the one thing that I think you'll ultimately see what happened in Philly going down. You know, maybe after the first quarter of the season is because Hertz is never going to be that accurate quarterback, especially going downfield. 
but they have mm-hmm. the town on offense to make up enough for the deficiencies that he has. And defensively, sure. when they really start gelling and when they keep Jordan Davis, their rookie defensive tackle, because when he was in, I believe the number when he was in on rushing downs, I believe filling a level like these, like 2.9 yards per carry. It was insane wow. how disruptive he was in the middle of that defense, you know? Mm-hmm. And so once all that really starts coming together, now granted, when you get to the playoffs, I mean, Jalen Hurts is going to be Jalen Hurts. We're not going to make it very far. I get that. I'm just talking strictly on a division itself. I just, I just don't think that we have enough defensively to stop them on crucial drives and offensively yeah. they're going to get Carson Wentz to make those crucial mistakes. And if he throws, I mean, I mean just like I go back to said earlier, if he throws picks on back-to-back drives again, I mean, a team like Philadelphia is going to take advantage of that. They eat him alive. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I just, no, Phil, I just Phil, don't see. Some... I'm sorry. I, uh, are ridiculous. Yeah. Yes, they are. You have A.J. Brown and uh, Devontae Smith on the outside. Miles Sanders gained well as their running backs. And Goddard's, st- and Goddard's going to come into his own this year. He did this past game. I believe he got like 80-some yards receiving or something like that. And he had like, I think like 10 targets or whatever. But uh, And and that's going to be Hurts' uh, safety valve going down the stretch because, I mean, he, he's, he's going to struggle getting the ball downfield. It's just not a very good But the pass positive on that, like. though, is – what's that? He's just not a very good passer. No. Well, see, well, well, the one positive he has is that A.J. Brown's one of the best contested ball receivers By the in the way, game. How in the world did A.J. Brown end up in, in Philadelphia? Somebody tell me how it happened. I just don't they get They traded it. a basket I don't of literally fans. mean. I mean, yeah. how did that happen? <laughs> you know, how do you let a guy like A.J. Brown go? I just, I don't get it. That, well, no, the better question is, what is Tennessee doing there? Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think Tennessee was so hung up on maintaining their dynamic with with Henry being their guy thinking well we have the we we have the dominant running game we'll bring in a veteran like Robert Woods like they did and we could address someone like uh Trey Burke or Traylon Burks and we'll be okay we could do it without AJ Brown which because is because even all time great Steven running thing. backs last yeah. forever <laughs> right exactly so i mean it was it was just a poor poor decision on their part you know so yeah, I, it just they overthought it I don't trust how Tennessee is trying to build going forward, honestly. They, they made a lot of questionable moves there this offseason uh, when you really look at what they did. Uh, but, you know, Dave, you did bring up a question before the show. Does this make Carson Wentz the best quarterback in the NFC East at this point uh, with Dak Hurt? So what, what what's your answer? Yes or no? Um, I, I, I have to say yes. Steve? I mean, um. No, Maybe with by no default, Redskins I don't think yeah. any of them are all that great, to be honest. But I mm-hmm. think I'd rather have, if I was starting a team, I'd rather have Carson Wentz than Jalen Hurts for sure. I'm not too wild about Daniel Jones either. So sort of by default, I'd rather have Carson Wentz and those two other guys and definitely more than Cooper Rush. So I think right. I agree with Dave, but it's sort of by default more than anything. Right. All right. So I think we all are in agreement there. Uh, all right, let's wrap the show up. For now that we're doing a compact show, Steve, we got to both do score predictions and game balls, I guess, don't we? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So okay, yeah, yeah. so my game balls, um, Curtis Samuel. One on offense, one on defense. Yeah, yeah Curtis Samuel gets a game ball, and I'm going John Allen on by defense. I just think he looked like a stud out there, and he looked like the captain. And I, you know, I hopefully his injury is not severe. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is game balls. And in terms of prediction, um, it's in Detroit. I don't think Washington's yet good enough or consistent enough to pull off two wins in a row, especially the better team. So I'm going to go Detroit in a close game. All right. Steve says Detroit in a close game. What about you, Dave? Well, I'm going to seal my man love right here so you can – Drive this home with me for the rest of the year, but I'll give my game ball to uh, Jahan Dotson. I thought he had a great game. He played almost borderline like a veteran out there with some rookie mistakes, too. I get that, but still, he gets my game ball offensively. Defensively, I'd have to give it to, uh, uh, I guess I got to give it to Forrest, really, Dark Forrest. I mean, he had his, I mean, he had a great game. Mm-hmm. So, and then my, in my score prediction, I still stick to what I did for. My season prediction, I think uh, Detroit pulls this one out. 
still. And maybe if it's if it's with DeAndre Swift, I think it'd be a pretty close game. Maybe like a maybe like a 24-19 type of game. But if DeAndre Swift is healthy, healthy. I can I can see a very disappointing loss for uh, Washington and losing by 10, maybe like a 31-21 loss. So that's how good I think DeAndre Swift is for that offense. And against our defense, who's going to stop them anyway? I mean, come Nobody. on. Let's be honest. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So uh, if I'm finishing this up, game balls, I'm going to say I want to give it to Gibson, the game ball. You know, I think he faced a lot of criticism before the season. And he played well. He, Like I said earlier, led the team in rushing and receiving yards. Are you kind of uh, giving him a participation trophy? No, I'm giving him <laughs> you led the team in, in yardage trophy. Uh, you it's know, like, we love that, you too, <laughs> that, that's, that That pass he caught on the sail route was beautiful. So, well, you I'm know, I actually, I actually do agree with Alex on that because – Coming into this game, he basically lost his starting job after he fumbled in the preseason. I mean, the guy definitely looked like he came in more focused. He was very, mm-hmm. he was ready to play the game, made no mistakes. He was, he was a patient runner. wasn't great. He's still got more, more room to grow. I mean, I kind of yeah. agree with that with Alex. Sure. I just well, think it was kind of funny don't... the way you phrased it. That was all. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, and I'm going to go Forrest, too, by the way, on defense. Um you know, I know Steve said it's too early to, you know, get excited, but I'm a little excited. No, it. I mean, absolutely. Uh, if you guys are fans, I'm not saying not be excited. I'm just saying it's too early to have don't. expectations that are through the roof. That's what I'm saying. Right. Don't crown him. I would never That's tell right. anybody, any fan, to not be excited. I mean, be excited right. about whatever. That's why you're a fan, you know. Sure. That's all right, Steve. And we'll I, start off 6-0, and 7-0 oh, and oh, or whatever, and then you'll be right back on the wagon. I will not. And, I will you'll be singing hail to the, and you'll be singing hail to the commanders. No. Steve will – they can win the Super Bowl. He won't sing that. I guarantee. Oh, you I that. know that. I know Steve's that. The I most won't either. Stubborn person I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, no way. No. And no. we're not. I'm not letting uh, you bastardize my version of Halo the Redskins either. No. No. I. I, I was never actually going to. <laughs> I know. I'm that. just teasing you. I don't. Are you gonna uh, play it though? Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I put a note in to put it in okay. there. Cool. Yeah. Um. And oh, so uh, for next week, I think Washington does win it. Uh, I think it's going to be another back and forth sloppy game, I, and it'll be higher scoring because, you know, Detroit can't stop anybody either on defense. So uh, I'm going to say it's probably going to be both teams in the 30s, like a 35-31 win for Washington. Okay, and I'll do this. Mm-hmm. We'll have a contest that I doubt anybody will get. If anybody can guess, listen to that Hail to the Redskins thing I played. If anybody can guess even come close to the type of guitar and amp and setup I had, I'll buy you a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, th- throw that. See, here's the problem, Steve. If any of our regular uh, bl- commenter idiots hear that, they probably know what kind of guitars you have because you've mentioned it before on our blog. You still have so, to guess the right one and guess the amp. That's true. You, ha- you have like five guitars or something. I've point, got a bunch right? of guitars and I've got multiple amps too. Yeah, yeah. But it's not that yeah. difficult to hear. You ought to be able to figure. If you know guitar, you, you could yeah. probably get a cut and guess. Yep. All right. That should do it for this week, guys. We will talk to you next Thursday. Later. See you. I'll probably forget all about my co-